Welcome back. Section 2 Python Data Containers and Structures. In this section, we will be looking at the very basics of Python, where we will try to understand what are the general syntax related things in Python and some related methods. Then we will be looking at what are the different data structures that are available to us in Python. After that, we will spend some time on understanding what are the control flow statements, namely thief statements and the different types of the loops. Then we will be spending some time on understanding how we can construct functions and how are these different from constructing the functions in our programming language. Finally, we will be spending some time on understanding a special type of the method called list comprehension and we will see some of the use cases related to some of these things as well. Let us get started. Python basics. In this video, we will look at some basics of Python like the variable assignment, the operators in Python like the arithmetic operators and, and the Boolean operators. Then we will also be looking at the string methods and then the print methods. So these print methods are completely different from what are available to us in R. Let us begin. Variable assignment. A variable is a name that can be used to denote something or some value. In Python, declaring a variable is quite easy and we can say x is equal to 5. That means we have just created a variable named x which takes the value of 5. If I hit enter and then if I want to see the value of x, I will say print. Within the parenthesis, I will say x. This shows me what is the value that x is taking. In R, creating a variable was little confusing. There were two types of the operators. One was the assignment operator, which was something like this. In And the other operator was the equal to. So there was some confusion in R regarding the assignment. However, in Python, we just have the equal to sign for everything. Now, let's say we have y is equal to 5.0. So what is the difference between x and y? The only difference between x and y is that they belong to different types. For example, if I say type of x, it shows me that x belongs to the integer type. And if I say print type y, this shows that y belongs to the float type. So the only difference between these two is that they belong to different types. Now, there are some rules that have to be kept in mind before creating a variable. The first thing is that a variable cannot start with a number. For example, if I say 3x is equal to 5, it will throw me an error saying that it is an invalid syntax. So this means that we cannot create variables which start with a number. The other thing is that the variables are case sensitive. If I say small x and capital X, so the case has to be taken care of while creating a variable. Okay. Now we have Python operators. Here we will be looking at two types of the operators. Number one is the arithmetic operators. I'm sure that you're familiar with most of them, the simple ones. And then we have the Boolean operators. Let's talk about them. Here, we have addition, which is just the plus sign. We have subtraction, which is just the minus. We have multiplication, and then we have the division. I'm sure that you are familiar of these things. Then we have the modulus or the remainder, Say, if I divide 10 by 3, what is going to be the remainder? If I divide 10 by 3, what is going to be remainder? The remainder is 1. And the operator that is used for remainder is the percentage sign. Then we have, say, if you want to see the flow division or the quotient that if you divide 10 by 3, then what is going to be the quotient or the flow division? The answer is 3. 
and the operator for that is double forward slashes and then if you want to see that what will be the answer if you want to find six square or say six cube so double steric so double asterisk is the operator to find out the power of then we will be looking at the string types in python we have three types of the strings the first string is that you can create with single quotes like this then you have a string which is created with double quotes and then you have string which is inside the triple double quotes here something like this now what is the difference between these three things these three type of the strings the first two are almost the same the difference lies in the string three suppose if you have to write a string which is going to consume multiple lines not just one line but multiple lines then you can use the third type of the string wherein you'll start a string with the triple double quotes and then you'll end with triple double quotes if i press enter and if i just see string three it shows me that it has taken care of the line breaks that we have given it to now let's say if i want to do something like this in string one if i give a line break in string one and if i then press shift enter it will show me an error the error is of the syntax error because this type of the syntax is not recognized by python if you have to use line breaks you can use it here now one thing that you can use is the combination of string one and string two or even string three for example if you want to write something like this maybe the value of x is 10. now here what i'm doing is i'm taking the double quotes and within double quotes i'm writing a string and notice that within this string we also have x which is in the single quotes so now this entire thing is treated as a string and so that is the benefit if you have a string like this which is going to contain a string which will have any quotes then you can use the combination of these two like this moving on then we have the print methods we have already seen the use of the print statement it's not just used to display things but it can also help you do some sort of fancy stuff that we are just going to see now suppose we have a string like this which says your score in science exam is 90. now here you have just specified the value of 90 but say that you don't want to specify this value as suppose that you don't want to specify this value as static but you want to assign say a variable which is going to take this value marks science is equal to 90 and then you want this to come over here what you can do is you can say print over here you can leave a placeholder or a blank which will be denoted by the curly braces and then you can ask python to fill this blank using the format function like this and if i just say marks science over here it'll show me that your score in science exam is 90 that is it is replacing this variable over here i can also specify just a simple number over here which will be then replaced in these curly braces now not just that if we have some multiple things suppose you have a string like this your score in science exam is dash 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 and score in maths exam is dash dash and then you want to fill a different value in these how can you do that one way to do that would be to specify what this blank is i'm giving it a name of a i'm giving it a name of b and now within the format i can say a is equal to 90 and b is equal to say 70. now it substitutes 
the value of A in this one and the value of B in the second block. The next thing that we are going to look at is the number formats. Within the print statements, you can have the option of stating the number in many different format. For example, if you have a number and you want to showcase it as, as a string, then this is what you can do. Then if you have a float number and you want to showcase it as, as integer or float or as exponential formats, then these are the format codes that you can use. Let us see some examples. Say we have a number one, which is 6.00. Now you already know that the type of this type of this number one is float. Now say that we want to convert this number into an integer, then what we can do is say we have a string like this, the integer of this number is now if we have to specify the integer format, the code for that is percentage D. All I'm doing over here is I'm just saying in a black, I want a number which is in the integer format. And then outside this with the percentage sign, I'm saying number one. If I hit enter, it shows me the number in the right format in which I wanted it to be. So let's look at this again. So what we have over here is I have a string like this and I want some number over here and the format in which I want a number is integer. We can see from here the encoding for an integer is percentage %d. I'm specifying the percentage %d over here and then I'm saying that in this placeholder which is the integer placeholder substitute this variable this number one over here. So it shows me the integer of number is the integer 6. Similarly, if I want to say convert this number into a string, then I can specify percentage s and if I want a float of this number, I can specify percentage f and if I want an exponential of this number, I can specify percentage e. So these things could be handy if you're working with some numbers and then you want those numbers in some strings and you want those numbers in particular formats then this is how you can do it then also if you want to play more with these number formats you can do that for example if you have a number say number two and And say that we want this number not in the integer format as it is right now, but we want this number in the float format. Then we can say percentage f, but we don't want these many decimals. We just want say two decimal places. Then how can we do that? We can just say percentage and then we can specify the number of digits that we want after the decimal. For example, if I say dot, then two, then f. Here, it changes the number format to two decimal places. So, in this video, we have looked at very basics like the variable assignment, the operators in Python, the string methods where we looked at the three methods of creating the strings, and then some print methods. See you in the next video.